Hi, Atul Gopal from Plugin India and we are with the team at Yulu. So uh, we are here to cover the new bike that they have launched, it's called the Dex. And uh, this is a significant improvement over the bike that they were using earlier and uh, you will see a lot more of these vehicles on the road. So let me take you through this bike. I've done about 50 kilometers on the bike and uh, would want to share some feedback. So uh, I think the one thing that marks this particular bike is a kind of frugal engineering, if you want to call it. Uh, we'll start from the handlebar, you know, and uh, if you kind of have a look at the handlebar, what you will see is the absence of almost any switch except this one, which is the horn, and I'd, I'd be very happy even if that goes away, right? Uh, the other interesting thing is that in most vehicles, you have a battery indication which is shown either by an SOC, right? Uh, or a set of LEDs. So over here, you have a single LED, which is saying green now, which means, okay, okay I'm charged, and it goes red when the charge runs low. Right, so, so you don't have to kind of, you know, put too much of uh, thinking on this particular thing. Either you are charged or you got to go and get the vehicle charged. Right. So there are two ways in which you can sit. Uh, and I like both ways actually. So this is the this is one which kind of is with your feet ahead a little bit. And this is one where your feet are behind. And I think the diversity of postures is important in a ride because it kind of helps uh, reduce the strain on the back right so i think uh, that's that's something which is kind of really nice about the vehicle there is a place to hang your bags if you want to uh, there is a independent there is suspension both in front and the back the first lot of yulu vehicles came in did not have any suspension at the back so they improved that uh, one more design feature which kind of is important from the yulu team's point of view is how does this vehicle stand up to abuse any shared mobility service has a big problem with people who for some reason or the other uh, want the vehicles to get damaged. It could be a local auto wala who is not very happy uh, with the options being provided to customers in his area and it's affecting his business. So, so here is the guy who is just going to kind of knock the vehicle off, right? And how the vehicle stand up to abuse uh, is something which is kind of very important from a design perspective, right? So, um, if you look at this particular design, you will notice the absence of almost any kind of wires which are kind of exposed, right? Except probably the brake wire, right? And, and that too, I am told, is now steel shielded. So, uh, so that's like abuse number one. Second is when you drop the vehicle, right? You will find that the plastic parts don't get impacted, right? So that's kind of one more way of looking at it, and. All of the electrical, electronics, battery is kind of sitting in this particular box over here. And, and, and here is where, uh, you know, the evolution of design has happened as a vehicle. The earlier Yulu vehicles would have a battery which is below the floorboard, which was kind of good from a center of gravity point of view. But, you know, Bangalore being Bangalore, uh, you had a lot of situations of flooding and vehicles batteries were getting damaged so the battery pack has now been moved from here to here another interesting thing that's happened with the pack is the change in uh, chemistry so earlier packs of yulu were using a smaller nmc pack which was about four or five kilograms and now uh, there is a eight kg LFP pack, which has got much better range. It's a 1 kWh pack, 50 ampere, 20, 50 volts, uh, 20 ampere R. And uh, it delivers almost 50% more range. So if 40 kilometers is what the earlier one gets, this one gets about 60. And, and if you're a small uh, last mile commuter, it doesn't really matter. But, but there is a serious number of people 
from the delivery industry, from the e-commerce industry who are kind of using it for their livelihoods and this is kind of really a godsend that extra 50% range means extra one trip less to the swap station every day and that much more opportunity to earn. So I think that's something which they will appreciate a lot. There is a very interesting uh, way in which the headlight comes on, right? So there is a light dependent register somewhere, right? So, so the moment I kind of, yeah, yeah, the moment I kind of put my hand here, which means basically the vehicle is saying it's night time now, you can see the headlight automatically comes on. So, so I wonder why is it that this is not a standard feature on all vehicles. I think this is a very, very interesting feature, right? And uh, the DRL is on all the time and the, the, the lights come on as soon as the ambient light kind of drops off. So uh, again, a good feature you look. The carrier is something that the e-commerce people will kind of definitely appreciate. Uh, I believe that the commuting version of uh, this particular vehicle will probably not end up having a carrier. Uh, very handsome looking LEDs uh, at the back and of course LEDs at the front so that means that much less amount of maintenance but uh, one thing which I definitely would like to have on these vehicles is an indicator. Uh, probably what is keeping the company away from that is it would mean an extra switch, an extra maintenance because the moment you have a moving part you have maintenance and you know uh, Yulu is a company which is really very concerned about how few moving parts should be there on the vehicle so that your maintenance issues kind of don't crop up. Uh, the stand is sturdier compared to the previous one. It's kind of much easier to take out and put back right so i think they've got you know probably one of the easiest in terms of you know and of course it helps that the vehicle is not very heavy somewhere between 50 to 60 kg weight and and that also means that uh, you have a watt hours per kilometer which is amongst the lowest for any vehicle uh, my guess is the range will be about 15 to 20 watt hours per kilometer uh, which is half of what you might get in an aether or a yulu or, or in an ola Right, so that's kind of, uh, if you're using it for a longer commute, you can be very happy that uh, you're probably uh, saving double the environment compared to uh, an Ola or a Nature. Done 50 kilometers, uh, not too much of back trouble. So by and large, I would say that the suspension, the tire and the general ergonomics are quite decent. Uh, what also helps is the fact that it's a slow speed vehicle and uh, as with any slow speed vehicle the jerks kind of get reduced thanks to the lower speeds. The motor is a little bit underpowered. Uh, 250 watts is a genuine 250 watts and uh, for that reason I ended up facing a little bit of problem when it came to uh, climbing the ramp from basements. Uh, flyovers don't represent so much of a problem. I've been doing enough traveling on the outer ring road of Bangalore. The other thing that I liked about the vehicle is its simplicity. So if you can see uh, there is only one button over here and I kind of don't really like to use that and that's the horn and and here you have uh, an LED which is which is kind of got two colors green and blue and you don't have multiple LEDs so what it says is green is okay and red is not okay and the interesting part is if you want to go swap a battery uh, you cannot typically swap it till the time that the button the LED actually turns red uh, another interesting thing that I found in these vehicles is that you have a kind of DRL. I'm going to show that DRL by getting down from the vehicle and right. So you can see the light kind of on and at night the headlights come on automatically. So there's no switch required for that. There's a kind of light dependent resistor LDR which kind of picks that up. 
सो आई एम काइंड ऑफ क्वाइट इम्प्रेस बाय द सिंप्लिसिटी एंड आई एम योर बिग फैन ऑफ सिंपल डिज़ाइन एंड द फैक्ट दैट इट्स ऑलमोस्ट अ स्विचलेस एक्सपीरियंस ओवर ह्योर इज समथिंग विच विच आई एम रियली रियली हैप्पी अबाउट a genuine 250 watts motor now so a lot of the indian low speed scooters actually have motors which are like 500 watts or 800 watts but this is a generally 250 genuine 250 watt motor now one of the problems of having a genuine 250 watt motor is that when it comes to gradients and if you're a heavy guy right maybe double my weight then you have a problem climbing slope so when i was taking this vehicle up from the basement up to the ground level i think i face a stalling problem right and uh, the gradient usually is about 12% 13% in such kind of uh, ramps so that's something which uh, is probably a government norm uh, if you go any higher it doesn't get qualified as an low speed vehicle right so i think that's something that we live with but i would suggest the government that you know it needs to be up from at least a 250 watts to maybe a 400 watts to kind of you know and the speed limit of 25 can be retained i don't think that needs to be played around with that's a safe speed but the motor wattage definitely needs to be looked at given the kind of you know uh, conditions of uh, weight and uh, you know luggage that this particular vehicle will end up carrying so uh, one of the things which i find a little bit mysterious is this throttle being present only in kind of uh, you know half the thing i i don't know what's the logic for this but i'll kind of try to find out and let you know but it's not very comfortable you you have to kind of uh, you know uh, when you when you hold it at the full right kind of position it kind of takes a lot more strain and uh, i i think it of course saves money in terms of uh, the build but uh, i don't really kind of rate that too high it's again one feature which i would probably want to get changed in the vehicle